Okay, so we are recording now, so I'll get this on YouTube. And so what, what we've got here is uh, just kind of the beginning, middle of creating this um, lab that we're <coughs> doing for a lab exercise. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> so what we've created so far are these two enumerations in the soda class. Uh, no, Sunday class. And uh, so what we're creating next is the soda class. And then we'll create the order class. And then we'll create the GUI and get it all working together and playing nice. So this is the food order lab one, chapter 12, part two lab that we're doing as a group exercise. In other words, I'm doing a demonstration of code. So here's our Sunday topping class. It's our, excuse me, enumeration. Here's our Sunday flavor enumeration. Uh, here's the Sunday class with its instance fields, its properties, which are pretty straightforward, its constructor, which sets the, uh, the topping count to zero, the price to 450, which is this base price. Um, there's a maximum number of toppings of two toppings. So our array of toppings is set to two. And we set the sub-zero to none. In fact, if we really wanted to fill that out, we could say, well, both of the, both of the toppings are none. We've got two toppings. They're both set to none. We've got a method that you pass in the index, and it returns the array uh, element at that index. So this could be, in this case, they're both none. But if we update them later on, like in add topping, we can update our array, pass in a Sunday topping, and add it to sub zero. So this could be topping sub zero equals sprinkles, is what this could be. And then our topping count goes up by one, and then we increase the price by 50 cents. And so that's what we've done so far. And next up is our soda class. And so uh, kind of just jumping in in the middle of this um, with the recording, but um, someone suggested it, and I thought it was a good idea, so here we are. So next up is, what do we got? Soda. So let's add the soda class. It has instance fields, properties, methods. And again, I'm just going off of the UML here. So does our dollar Uh, adding a soda flavor is 15 cents. On the mock-up, you can see only one flavor can be added and only two toppings, so only one flavor. So we don't have an array of flavors, we just have one flavor. So the soda class is a little bit easier because, again, you don't have an array of flavors, it's just one, if you have a flavor. Uh, that flavor is private. The data type is our enumeration soda flavor. The identifier is underscore flavor. And we've got our price. So these are our instance fields. Our 
property is going to be called flavor. And it only has a get block. It's a read only property. Because all it does is a, a read block, a get block. Return underscore flavor. You know, price, which also has a get block. And again, I showed you some shorthands for this. This is a shorthand for a read-only price. So this is a read-only property that returns underscore price. We'll talk about this arrow sign as we get into the class a little bit more. So basically this and this kind of do the same thing. One, this returns the flavor, this one returns the price. Capital P on price returns the instance field price. Uh, the constructor then, public soda. Think about what this does. Uh, it's gonna set the price, base price, so the price is going to be whatever that is, $1.75. The underscore flavor equals soda flavor dot none. What else, what other fields do we have? We're setting the price, we're setting the flavor. So that's our constructor. I don't think there's much else to do there. I might come back to that. We'll see. Uh, public void add flavor. Soda flavor F underscore flavor equals F. So if we call this add flavor, pass it in as soda flavor, we're set the instance field equal to whatever is passed in. So that's add flavor. So now we've created these four two enums, two classes, and now we're going to create an order. So let's create a class called order. Classes are typically public. Instance fields. Properties. Methods. Okay. private string name just reading off the UML private Sunday underscore Sunday so our data type of this instance field is a class We got some properties. Let's do public string name underscore name. They're all kind of the same. Public soda is our type. Soda is also our identifier returns underscore soda. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that just gets you scratching your head. 
Like if you don't understand that this is your data type, this is your identifier, and this is your field, like just the words, public soda soda, arrow soda. And that will take a non-programmer and make them hit their head on their keyboard. Or if you don't know what each piece is, make it hit your head on your keyboard. Uh, Sunday's the same way. And we've got one more for price. Uh, huh, huh, huh. So let's think about price. I'm going to do this one. In the uh, old school way. And I'm going to return. Well, what is the price? The price, well, you get you got a Sunday with the price, you got a soda with the price. Soda has a price property. Sunday has a price property. So on order, you could return Sunday.price. So this is the price property of our Sunday plus our soda's price. So the price for our order is just our Sunday and our soda added together. So, <coughs> to piece that together. Next up, we've got our methods, which has a constructor. public order, so this is our constructor, the name of the individual order, bool has Sunday, bool has soda. So has Sunday, has soda, true or false, right? Because they're bool. Let's set our name field equal to the name parameter. If has Sunday, if has Sunday is true, let's instantiate our Sunday. Underscore Sunday equals new Sunday. If has soda, we instantiate our soda. Right? When we call this under when we call new Sunday, new Sunday calls our constructor and does all of this. When we call new soda, it calls our soda constructor and does all of this. Just checking chat, going good. Um, bu, 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 bu. Let's pull this back up. Uh, let's see, do I need to do anything else in the constructor? Uh, nothing comes to mind. So when we call an order, we're gonna pass it, pass in true or false on whether it has a Sunday or has a soda. Instantiate our Sunday and our soda. All right. Now we get the fun part. You might want to fast forward this on the, uh, if this is a recording. 
the dragging and dropping uh, that is making these forms. Call this one labeled name and name or food error. Make it bold real quick. There we go. All right, invisible to false. Okay. checkbox here we're going to call this check Sunday check soda Got Sunday toppings. And we've got drink mix ins. Label toppings error, visible to false.
And this is going to be called label mix in error. It's also not visible. And now our button to make it all compile together. Okay, we're going to have a group box over here that's kind of like this. And actually, there's a um, Uh, there's like a rich text box. Here we go. We're going to add a rich text box. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. This guy's a little bit bigger font. going to have a label down here for total And this is called label total price. All right. If check Sunday dot checked is true, so I'm thinking first we got to do is get the name string username equals text username dot text. So I'm thinking about creating the order. What what does an order make, or what is an order made of? An order is made of a user's name, a Sunday, and a soda. So in order to create the order, I need to get these three fields. So I got the name. Now I'm going to look for the Sunday. I'm going to check for the soda. Now, you could do something like if check Sunday or check soda. If either one is checked,
and So you want to see basically if they put in a username. Um, is null or empty will return true. And the string is not null or empty. meaning else error message. Um, so I'm going to put in a breakpoint right away and check that out. Um, label name or food error dot visible is true. Debug, start debugging. Just want to check on my little if statement here. I think it makes sense, but let's click on that. Leave the name empty. Good, it went to my else block. So check soda is true or that's false, but this is true. This or is true, but this and, this side here is false because the, the name is null or empty. So it's going to give us the name required, no food selected. Um, so if I, if I do this again, let's put in a name, Bill, and I click add item to order. Now, that's false, that's false, that's false. So we get false on the left and true on the right. So it should also go to our else block, good. So both of those scenarios are coming up false. Now if I do build with that, that should go into our if. Okay, and, and you see it did. Okay, so inside of our if, let's let's hide our error message. Label name or food error dot visible is false. And what we're going to do is we'll go ahead. Now, my order, I'm just going to create an order object here. At the class level of the form. Um, that, that way its scope can be, you know, basically the whole form. Um, and then here, this is where we instantiate our order. So an order equals new order takes in the name which is username. All right, a true or false for has Sunday. Which is uh that's going to come from the check, the checkbox. We can literally pass in true or false by passing in check Sunday dot checked, and then has soda is check soda dot checked. So again, what this does creates an or uh, instance of an order.
All right, so when we create our order, it'll instantiate our Sunday, it'll instantiate our soda. Um, next we need to look at our toppings. So again, we'll handle some validation here for these things. If check, oh, what is it? Check sprinkles dot checked and check nuts dot checked. If they're all three checked, checked syrup dot checked. If they're all three checked, error message. Else, add toppings. So let's do this label toppings error dot visible is true. Label toppings error dot visible is false. Um, probably when we click yes, we can show all these Sunday toppings. Um, da, 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 da. Let's do group box. See if that works. Yay. I can then delete the label. That cleans that up. Cleans that up nice. Now looking at the events for check Sunday, we can its default is check changed. So if it goes from true to false or false to true. If check Sunday dot checked, uh, I need to name my group box. This is going to be called group. Da, 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 looking for the name. Go to the properties window. Group. Sunday toppings. So we did this on check changed. If check Sunday is checked, so if it is checked, Group Sunday toppings dot visible is true. Else, group Sunday toppings dot visible is false. So let's just start by doing that. Okay. So that's good. Um, we're gonna make make that group box invisible by default. Good. Now if I check all three, only two toppings allowed. 
and that was nested. Notice that that's nested inside this if statement. So this if statement can only run if this if statement is true, right? So we, we, we had to put in a name so that we can get inside this if statement. And then we got into this one that showed that error if they were all three checked. Okay, now we add toppings. If check sprinkles dot checked, and and for uh, saving some code here, we could we could do. Now this this will be new, but so I'll, I'll fill this out. Order. Uh, no, it's what's the identifier for my order? An order. An order. Now remember we had a property that returned uh, our Sunday. So this property Sunday returns our Sunday, underscore Sunday. So an order dot Sunday, this is where we add topping. Sunday topping dot sprinkles. So again, we get IntelliSense here. So an order Sunday add topping, this returns our instance of our Sunday. So in order, Sunday, add topping for sprinkles. You could condense that down onto one line like that. If check nuts dot checked and order, Sunday, add topping, Sunday topping dot Nuts. And again, keep in mind, every time we call add topping from Sunday, add topping increases the topping count and increases the price. We know not all three are checked, but we could still have two checked. So So now if we got all three of our things checked, we give them an error message. Otherwise, we hide the error message, and we add the toppings per the user's request. All right, so that's um, the process for the toppings, the the, the the mix-ins are just the same. So we got to go over to the drink side now. Uh, let's see. We got so basically over here we got three check boxes and we are only allowed to check one. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So we're only, it's, this was a nice if statement that I, you know, got to do our validation. I'm trying to think to do the same thing. Uh, let's see. If check lime dot checked. You got lime and peach, you got peach and mango, you got lime and mango. Is those three <clears throat> trying to think of an easy way to do this? Um, 
So you got lime and peach, you got peach and mango, you got lime and mango. And there's those three options. So that's lime and peach, that's lime and mango. Now we gotta do peach and mango. Thinking that does it. So let me try this. Oh. That makes more sense. Mega was giving me a hard time because I coded something wrong. Okay, so now we're checking for, for at least two here. I'm going to do the same thing, put them in a group box. Delete this label. Call the group box. Drink mix-ins. Check changed. Check mix. Check soda. Dot checked. If it is, group Sunday toppings. Dot. Trying to do a little shorthand there, but uh, I didn't name this guy. Group drink mixins. Uh, let's see. Group drink mixins dot visible equals. Uh, true or false, so the question is check um, check soda dot checked if it is so is the check soda checked if it is the mix-ins is set to true. If it's not checked, it's set to false. So this is an if-else that does the same thing as this. Uh, 
and that's working. Let's set it to false by default. Visible is false. I'm going to scroll by it 10 times. That's four. There it is. Maybe four, not 10. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Too many mixins selected. Else, add mixins to soda, which is if check lime dot checked and order. Dot soda, remember the property returns the instance of the object. Dot add flavor. Soda flavor dot lime. We've already made sure we can only check one of them. Add flavor, soda flavor dot mango. Okay, so we go, yeah, we gotta change that visibility to false. I thought I did that. What did I do wrong? I hit something else. I did it on my text box. I hid my text box. I meant to hide the group box. All right, we are getting there. Create your order, check for error message, add toppings, check for error message, add mixins. So we're still inside of here. Now really all that's left is to display our output. And uh, we could do that. Again, we want to make sure that we created our order. Order is created in here, so let's also display our output in here. Um, now, looking at the mock up, uh, this is. Um, Formatted so we can get this formatted similar to the mock-up. Uh, it's going to be a few steps to get to there So let's start by putting the person's name. That's not too hard um, This is our rich text box So we'll call this RTB output RTB So 
So that's going to get the name again, just kind of looking at here. Um, and then we got like a new line and some dashes. Then we have the Sunday. Now, it's only. If there's a Sunday and a soda, it shows both. If there's just a soda, it just shows the soda. I'm assuming if it's just a Sunday, it shows just a Sunday. I'm just trying this. I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm doing this for a quick test. So either you're outputting it has just a Sunday, just a soda, or you have both. And uh, let's see, we're, we're using the order because these are gonna be set to null if you don't instantiate them, they'll be un th these will be set to null. So here I'm checking against to see if the Sunday is null. And uh, this is my test. So here, Abe. Yeah, uh, that didn't work because line 64 line 64 is saying that object reference not set to so yes line 64 that didn't work um so there's got let's see that didn't work uh True, true. I could just say, yeah. I could go back to my checkbox. You're right. Yeah, I'm just trying this now. I just want to see. Hey. Yes. Yes. 
Notice those are running together, but you get the idea. Uh, as Evan mentioned, you could you could have just used the check boxes. You didn't have to check to see if the soda was null or if the Sunday was null. You could just check the check boxes. Um, so per the output, when we have a Sunday. Sundays have toppings. So the toppings are just output. You're going to get the word Sunday followed by a hyphen, followed by the topping list, followed by the price. Now, Here's the word Sunday. Keep in mind, wait, yeah, yeah. Um, now we need the topping list. RTB dot output dot text plus equals. Now. Let's see. Uh, keep in mind, Sundays, we can get the toppings with get topping. And there should be a topping count. So we can get the topping count. Get the topping count like that. So what we need to do is uh, Sunday.get topping, passing it I as your index. So this will say the word Sunday. This will get your topping counts, the number of toppings. So read the number of toppings. And that's either going to be 0, 1, or 2. Then this will not loop if it's 0. So we, you know, i equal to 0, 0 is not less than 0. So if it's 0, that means that you never added a topping. So you might say if topping count zero um, well wait a tick uh, I mean if it's zero we still want the output of none I think so you see here the soda is none so even if the Sunday is none, we'll just add the word none. Uh, RTB, but we could still do it this way. And order Sunday get topping at zero, which will which will say none. This will return none. And then if it's if it's one or two else else if topping count is not zero 
then we loop through each topping and print that out into our text box. Um, and then and then we need to add a hyphen. So Sunday, a hyphen, this will print out none, or this will print out the toppings. And then we need the price. There's the price property to string currency. Um, might extract this into a method because I will do the same thing kind of down here for both so I might extract this into a method but let's just get this tested so this is just for a Sunday just for a Sunday so Abe some hat we need a line break here Sprinkles and nuts, which are correct, and 550, which is 50 cents on top of the 250 cents, as a dollar on top of the 450, so our price is right. Yeah, I'm with you, uh, Evan. I see, I see what you're saying here, but uh, let me let me kind of tidy this up just from where it's at, and then I'll carriage return a new line. Let's see. Uh, so here we'll put in a new line here. Hey Jason, I'm doing like a little live demo, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, we'll chat. Let me let me let me swing by and like a little bit. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. I also want a space. Like a little extra space in between toppings. Notice the total down here is not updated. Notice that we need a line break right there. So maybe at the end of the price, we add a new line here, here's the none, we test out the none, that works, um, I need a, so this is getting my none. I think it's a hyphen. Yeah. After the word none, before the price. Got all that. Add in another break here before. So it's just it's just playing with the formatting. Um, but at the end of each, we add two new lines. Four fifty. Add some toppings. Five fifty. Another five fifty. Five. All that's left is this little total down here, um, which is a grand total of zero, and then every time through 
once we have a valid uh, once we have a valid order display output grand total and order dot price so we keep add that individual price to our grand total and then label total price dot text equals grand total to string oh that did something line 26 What did I just do there? Barking at me on line 26. So let's go back to my debug. Um, oh, so an order, the price, there, there was no soda price. So this is the line we got to do, we got to get. Um, kind of the same deal. So if the so let's see so price is Sunday dot price price is soda dot price price is both. Yeah, you know, I, there's probably, I got to think, I, I'm pretty sure there's a better way to check for null. Um, but that should fix the problem that we're having, which is 
here, here. Now we're good. Um, well, if both are null, if okay, well, uh, you typed a bunch. Um, if both are null, the, the 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 order would not be created, right? So, so you have to. We already have some validation that checks for both being null, right? Because up here we're checking. You know, one or the other will be null. Um, so let's let's follow this through. So we're creating one with the Sunday. Instantiates our Sunday. Does not have a soda. Adds our Sunday toppings. Price goes up by 50 cents. Yeah, that's looking good. Now, for whatever reason, our total isn't giving me the $5 right here. Grand total. Oh, look at this. Label toppings there? No, 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 no. Label total price. Um, so, Evan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a breakpoint in that code that I just wrote right here. And I'm going to remove my breakpoint from right here. And I'm going to start debugging at that point. So, soda, soda null is true. So our price is just then equal to the Sunday's price, which is 450. And then we return 450. And then we update our that's that's coming here into grand total. We're adding 450 into grand total, and then we're outputting grand total. So here you see 450. Now if we click add this item to the order. Soda is still null. That Sunday's price is $5, so we return $5. The grand total is $4.50 plus $5, which is $9.50. Now we're outputting $9.50 to the label. So Evan, did I answer your question in that? By walking through it? Great. Now, mm, da, 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 da. see if I can extract this into a method. Quick actions and refactoring. Yeah, I don't like that anyways. I'm just going to cut this code. Wait a sec. And here. So this is all of our Sunday info. And 
Now I'm going to come right down into here, private void display Sunday, paste all that, and then I'm just going to call display Sunday. Because when I when I do it again down here, I'll display both Sunday and soda. All right, it's taking longer than anticipated. I well, I don't know about it anticipated. I knew it was going to be a long one. Let's take 15 minutes. You guys you guys can uh, go to the bathroom, get a drink, uh, come back a little bit before 11 o'clock. And we're going to finish this up. We're almost, we're on the home stretch. Okay, we're back from a little break. And uh, I started coding and I just realized I wasn't recording. So um, I just made this method. I haven't called this method yet. Just made display soda. We're appending the word soda. We're appending the mix in, which this will either say none or whatever the flavor is. And then appending the price. So that's display soda, and then we're just going to come up here, and uh, here's our output. And th th this appends the uh, the price, which is going to be the same regardless of what's checked. And then it appends the name. So this is output the output total price. This is outputting the name. Um, and then this is display soda. And I think I need, uh, yeah, a couple new lines there after my soda. I might come back and change that. But, and then this one. Display Sunday and Display Soda. Uh, so let's check this out. We got to check the soda. Bob Lime, dollar seventy five, three fifty. Now that's interesting uh, that my soda is always a dollar seventy-five. So I don't think I got the mix-ins right. So if I go to my soda, see here, add flavor. I got to increase my price every time I call add flavor. I got to increase my price by fifteen cents. So now I got dollar ninety. There we go. Getting our total added up good. Let's see what this looks like. See what happens here is that Sunday adds in a couple extra line breaks. Um So we could clean that up a little bit. That's that's nothing major. This is this is this is uh, just formatting little things here. So Sunday, let's always add one. We'll do the same thing for display soda. Let's always add one line break, and then. Uh,
I don't think this makes sense. Hey, oh, that's working. All right, what do we got here? Line 43. Okay. So we got a couple a couple things popping up here um, that I need to clean up. So our order was doing output even when there was an error, which it shouldn't have. Um, the error was here. Um, now I could do bool is valid equals false. Now we're going to assume it's what we assume it's true. Is valid equals false. So here we set the is valid equals false. Now only if valid, do we do all this fun stuff? And that just goes is valid. So now if you hit an error, it'll never do the output. So that was one quirk that I fixed. All right, let's see what else we can find. Looking good on the Sunday side. Okay, now this one, when I switch from Sunday to soda, we got line 45. This is the one that I hit before. So I gotta see what's up with line 45 with no mix-ins currently. Uh, oh, line 45. Why am I checking for... Uh-huh.
I, I have no, no need to check here. Um, I don't need to check for my Sunday stuff. This is my Sunday stuff, and I'm checking for it. Um, I'm checking for it when I'm dealing with my soda. So it's crashing looking for my Sunday stuff, and that's, that's what's crashing it. Um, so an easy solution for that is if check Sunday dot checked, then we check my Sunday stuff. Same thing on my soda side if check soda dot checked. All right, let's see if what we broke. Looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. 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 Guess I could make this a little bit wider so that it all fits on one line. Okay, good. 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 All right, now we do both. Good. Good. I'm going to call this Bob 3. $550.90. Adding up to our total. So this was a uh, definitely a, you know, medium sized, even, you know, even if you knew what you were doing, it, it this is a medium-sized project, you know, in the sense that it definitely took a little while to get through this. Uh, and again, there's, some of it was new to us, so I uh, wanted to make this a group project. Now, moving on into our next labs, not nearly as complex, right? Lab 2, one enum, one conference uh, class. Um, this one, uh, an enum, a class called Ability, and a class called Champion. Uh, still not quite as bad, and these are the, the champions that you make. Um, and so this one's, this one's really not so bad either, um, even though... You know, you got two classes and an enum, not so bad, and then a build a lab. Okay, and uh, we don't have a ton of time left today, but I would encourage you as I stop this, we've got 30 minutes in class left. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to uh, put this on YouTube for your reference later on if you choose to do that. And then you got 30 minutes to get started on these next labs. So let me stop here.